Hi everyone. Here are some lesser known facts about LA Creole. The ship was built in 1829 in Le Havre, France. It was 120 feet long and 28 feet wide and was designed to carry passengers and cargo between France and the United States. The ship was built of oak and had a displacement of 400 tons. It could carry up to 100 passengers, 100 tons of cargo and had a top speed of 10 knots, 19 kilometers per hour. The ship was named after the island of Haiti, known as French Creole. In 1830, the island of Haiti, located in the Caribbean Sea, was in a historical context following a successful revolution and attainment of independence. It's important to understand that at this time, Haiti was divided into two independent entities, the Republic of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. In 1804, after years of struggle for independence, the colony of Saint Domingue, which had become the territory of Haiti, declared independence from France and became the world's first African Republic. The island was subsequently named Haiti. However, in 1844, a portion of the eastern part of the island declared independence from Haiti and established the Dominican Republic. The La Creole was one of the most successful trading vessels of its time. The ship survived several storms and shipwrecks, but always returned to port. This aspect of La Creole's history can serve as an inspiring example of resilience and professionalism among sailors of that era. It also adds an interesting dimension to the study of maritime and trading aspects of the 19th century. The ship was featured in several famous works of literature, including the novel The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas and the novel The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. In Alexandre Dumas' 1844 novel The Count of Monte Cristo, the ship La Creole plays a significant role. It is one of the vessels upon which the plot unfolds. Particularly, the main character Edmond Dantes, later known as the Count of Monte Cristo, finds himself aboard La Creole when he is arrested and sent to prison. This event becomes a pivotal point in the novel's storyline. In Mark Twain's 1884 novel Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, the ship La Creole is also mentioned. In this book, it appears as a vessel engaged in a skirmish with rafts on the Mississippi River in one of the chapters. This event is part of the adventures experienced by the main character, Huckleberry Finn. These references to the ship La Creole in literary works add an additional layer of artistic significance to it, helping to establish a connection to the history and adventures of the characters. The ship was also depicted in several films, including the 1934 film Robinson Crusoe and the 1954 film The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Using the ship La Creole in films helps audiences immerse themselves more fully in the atmosphere of the time and place of the events, creating a visual representation and connecting with historical sources. It also underscores the historical reality and details in the cinematic interpretation of the story. The ship is a symbol of French history and culture. The very fact that the La Creole ship has been actively utilized across various artistic creations grants it the status of a symbol. It becomes a metaphor for the ideas and values embodied in these works, thereby firmly embedding itself into French cultural history. Hence, the La Creole ship has evolved into not only a historical artifact but also a powerful emblem that enriched French literature, art, and culture with images of adventure, freedom, and cultural significance. The La Creole ship took part in the Pastry War under Lieutenant Commander de Joinville. The Pastry War has several humorous and astonishing aspects that reflect the uniqueness of this conflict. War's Pretext The term Pastry War originates from the unusual pretext for the conflict. A French baker named Remont claimed that Mexican border soldiers had invaded his bakery and ate all of his cakes, thus destroying them. In response, France demanded compensation for damage to French property and used it as a pretext for a military operation. French Blockading Fleet 
the French dispatched a blockading fleet to the Mexican port of Veracruz. However, the French force of around 6,000 soldiers was too small for a successful invasion, so they took the port's bridge scales as collateral and demanded ransom. British Mediation As mentioned earlier, the British ambassador acted as a mediator between France and Mexico. The British proposed a settlement and persuaded both sides to return to peaceful negotiations. Short Duration of the War The conflict itself didn't last long. It began in 1838 and concluded in 1839. The comedic misunderstanding of the war's pretext and the relatively small size of the armies make this conflict unique in history. Nickname by the people as the Pastry War conflict unfolded, Mexicans began ironically referring to the French soldiers as dumplings. This aspect adds a humorous twist to what could have been a more serious situation. These comedic and astonishing details make the Pastry War an intriguing case in history where an unusual pretext led to quite extraordinary events. The La Creole ship model was built to plans of Jean Boudriot. The model was made without sails to allow for a better view on the very detailed, impressive rigging. The dark planking is ebony, the underwater hull has copper plating, the gun port section, the galleon and the boats are made from box wood, the deck is ash tree, deck superstructures are bare, the masts are from birch tree, the yards are walnut. This model of the La Creole is a very beautiful masterpiece, especially in detailing of hull and rigging. Thanks for watching.